My prayer is answered in Mantralaya. It's indisputable that we have all been created by the Almighty for some definite purpose. Some don't realize the divine intent till the end of their mundane existence. Others understand the purpose of their life in the early stages itself. while some others get such awareness in the middle and the rest in the later part of their life in many a case it is an extraneous influence that causes such enlightenment in the case of those who have an early realization their actions will be such as drawing the attention of others and coming under their close examination without their being aware of it yet others experiencing such awareness in the middle stages of their life will reflect on their past years and take lessons out of that for char- chartering the course of their future years the third lot who understand belatedly will be the emotional type and would feel that their past deeds have led to their present status and as such take life in its stride these apply in no different a manner to the saintly personages as well there are some who are born great and such subjects whose greatness is foreseen even before their birth make entry into the terrestrial environs without coming in contact with mother earth and are taken into the fold of the shrimat the monastery even at birth and later turn out as spiritually exalted ones during their mundane life a different category comes under the monastic order at a young age while some others take to sanyasa ashrama late in their life despite their being given to supreme morality all through the divine avatars too conform to this in the sense that there is a definite intent behind their advent in this world shri hari has in fact made known in advance his purpose of incarnation on various occasions and has appeared in the mundane world to accomplish those the dasha avataras and other manifestations were thus preplanned ones to accomplish definite objectives in the lives of haridasas too many of them have been made aware at some stage about the purpose of their birth such divine enlightenment experienced by them having been through some medium by such spark of ignition they have known about their past birth and in continuation thereof changed their lifestyle later sri purandra dasa being a standing example of this those who ponder over aspects like who i am why i am born what is to be achieved during my lifetime are persons who would certainly not like to spend their life in the normal way if my life is analyzed in this manner i was from my young age immersed in hari bhakti and devotion towards guru such thoughts always occupying my mind even in the midst of my school college education the spiritual fire in me was blazing along with my passion for writing which was also building up after writing my university exam the very next day i visited tirupati and on return took up a job with an automobile company in anna salai later i took a presidency at raipeta and immediately following that my brother was involved in a serious accident and due to that i vowed to visit mantralaya after he improved in his health i performed sankalpa seva at mantralaya soon after my brother was his normal self but i was almost on the verge of putting an end to my life there unable to bear the torments in my life that i was then passing through shri guru raja at that time showered on me his bountiful mercy and graced me with the benediction which soon changed my life for the better all these have been detailed in part 1 but are contextually relevant here though i could not realize at that moment that the venerable old man who had received from me an okra robe was none else than shri raghavendra swami his pronouncement 
your deeds will be of immense benefit to others and your life will be oriented towards this goal has indeed come true and i perceive its truth after 34 years while writing this part 8 i think of him every moment and the advice given by him for one and half hours in the brindavana prakara he is serving as a beacon to me in my life's journey these influences having sown in me the seed for a novel kind of scheme for execution in the interest of the devotees i shunned government jobs for the sake of my interest in taking up writing as a whole time pursuit as also for embarking on the research work connected therewith so too in regard to private job opportunities that were aplenty then <coughs> undoubtedly it's the divine grace and the benediction of the guru that have given me a footing in this life my involvement and dedication in this field will remain deep rooted and even after my life span comes to its predetermined end my writings will hopefully be shining and rendering immortality to my name my mind often prompts me that there is something big that we devotees have to do in the worship of sri raghavendra while books can be written by an individual like me a gigantic project that i have conceived in memory of that celebrity can be executed only by the collective effort of a large number of devotees while writing and publishing is my livelihood i do not expect monetary support from any source for this venture and the only assistance i have so far had were the ones i got from ttd and the philanthropic sri mr bandarkar i have often pondered why guru raja has given me a mind that is disinclined to accept any help from other sources and strangely it is the same guru raja who is now making me accept others help for the granthalaya project i have mulled why such thought of acceptance of help has now occurred in my mind indeed it is the divine power that had attracted me for propagating the writings grantha prachara that has also sown in me the seed for the founding of a granthalaya sri raghavendra's mrittika brindavanas are coming up all over the country about which i have also been writing in this serialized publication but sri raghavendra has not so far instilled in me the idea of setting up his mrittika brindavana by me he has not also implanted in me the desire to install an ideal idol of his though i am aware of his existence in shila rupa at several places but in the raghavendra granthalaya to come up there will be a brindavana and also idols for him while in dhyana i had realized on several occasions shri guru raja advising me to be patient and a time will come when i should also have to be expecting devotees helping hand to accomplish something noteworthy and in 2007 when i was traveling along the ghat section of cameroon hill in malaysia sri raghavendra enlightened me on granthalaya and i visualized a shape to it and had written in part 7 that if interested parties should make available sufficient land within 50 kilometers of chennai to establish the granthalaya either as donation or as a payment deal with sufficient monetary contribution from devotees or at hand the project could become a reality after the release of part 7 on 7 2008 there were number of inquiries about the granthalaya project many devotees asked me whether it signified a library and i had to wait for an opportunity to make it known that whatever the granthas contained they will be portrayed in an intelligible manner to the masses it actually materialized in november 2008 when by the grace of sri guru raja sri raghavendra granthalaya seva and educational charitable trust was registered and in december 2008 was inaugurated in the ainavaram math 
when its object was made known widely subsequent to this devotees contributions were accepted and they started pouring in regularly shri rajshekar and shri sainath suddenly spoke to me one day from hyderabad offering land for the proposed project shri sainath had told me even some years earlier that he was desirous of doing seva to shri raghavendra as his life's mission on a permanent footing i had told him that then i had told him then that shri guru raja will certainly afford him an opportunity for that and to continue his normal life till then the land offered by the two was 10000 square feet in extent but my proposed project according to my reckoning reckoning requires a la- land space of 20000 square feet which may even go up to 50000 square feet such vast stretch of land may be found only outside chennai and it was my estimation that it may require at least 5 years to collect funds for that while i was pondering how such a large sum could be collected it occurred to me that the information furnished in my shri raghavendra mahime publication should in itself be sufficient to arouse the interest of the devotees and that i would wait until such time as the required funds came from them it was in march 2009 that i visited mantralaya and placed before shri raghavendra swami my supplication that he should grace the successful completion of the granthalaya scheme next day when i was ready to start for anegondi with a group of devotees i was escorting to that place shri k vasudevan called me on cell phone from chennai and said excitedly sir my family members and i saw your pamphlet on shri raghavendra granthalaya and for such a worthy project we are prepared to make available the necessary land on hearing that i became dumbfounded for some time for i had prayed to shri raghavendra just the previous day to show me a way for the successful completion of the granthalaya project and the next morning itself such a telephonic message came to me like a bolt from the blue i replied to the caller i am happy at the offer you are making i am at mantralaya now and shall contact you after 3 days at chennai shri k vasudevan is an old acquaintance of mine who had come in contact with me through shri raghavendra mahime publications he had helped me a lot to write about tiruvayaru in part 7 he has also accompanied me and rather served as a guide to places like chitradurga mahishi and dwaraka figuring in that in this work from mantralaya we went to navabrindavana and i prayed day too to the nine gurus enshrined at that place for my project to materialize soon later i came to chennai and shri vasudevan and shri kb narayanan met me then they said the place could be seen and if found suitable further negotiations could be initiated on the same afternoon i started with them to see the land accompanied by my wife 